Well, all right. After giving it a serious CAT scan, the CAT says the guns are going to require some serious scrubbing. So she said, get to work. Today, yeah, we got a MS-290 saw here uh, in pieces. So tip for the day, you're cutting wood, set your chainsaw in the back of the truck or up against a tree when you're done with it because if you set it on the ground, well, you could run over it and ruin a perfectly good chainsaw. Well, you know, I really thought I had an old school like siphon fed, I call it flash the wonder gun all put together. They must be put up in a tub upstairs because honestly, like, even if you just go down to Harbor Freight, you can get you a good gravity feed gun that sprays pretty nice. Um, this is uh, a gun I use to spray primer with. And, you know, it, it's a good brand, but it's not necessary that you buy that. The thing that is necessary with most high build primers is the fluid needle and the fluid tip setup needs to be 1.7 and bigger probably. All right, so suggestion, if you're going out to look to buy a gun, um, you know, those kits on Amazon, I want to try to find a 1.6 to a 1.9 tip set in there. It could be a range of any of those. That'd be to spray like your high build primer. Then with epoxy and solvent borne base coat, even your some of your clear coats, a 1.3 setup would be awesome to have. And then for the clear coat, I go with a 1.3 to 1.4. Uh, yeah, I know guys, there. you ask 10 people, they'll tell you 10 different ways. I've done this all my life. That's kind of the setup that I use and it works for me. All right, so I have found that, uh, what, this is a 32 ounce mixing cup? works about perfect to fit all your paint gun pieces in. I like to start off, I'll just take the air cap off. Now I picked this gun out of all the others because I know this one hasn't been taken apart and cleaned in a long, long time. We'll take the PPS adapter off of this thing. So if you had a cup, it would just be screwed directly in here. But since we have the adapter, it's not terrible inside not great it's been a long time since this gun was disassembled and cleaned so next i take the material control knob out I'm not going to mess with trying to break this little adjuster loose or anything all right so next pull that fluid needle out ah, you can see it's got some dirt on there some paint residue and when you buy your gun it should come with a handy gun wrench like this fits everything on the gun so then i loosen up my fluid tip and i'll take it off and then we're going to look at how much paint buildup we have inside of this gun because it's dirty right now all right so yeah quite a bit of stuff in there and then inside of the gun, we got to scrub all inside of this stuff and clean it out good, good. So what I do, I stick it all down in this cup uh, as low as I can. That way we use as little lacquer thinner as possible. And I'm just going to get my gallon of lacquer thinner and fill it. Yep, we're going to pour her up. We're going to stop when we get to the top of those fluid passages so we don't get any thinner where air flows through this thing. And that'll get us set. We're going to let this soak overnight. So give it a good 12 hours and we'll be back. My, my cleaning tools are pretty fancy. Chunk of gray Scotch-Brite. Take a wooden stir stick and uh, get out your Whitland device and cut you off some toothpicks off of it. Sure, they sell gun cleaning kits. You can buy one. I'm just here trying to show you an easy way. And it works good. 
Most of those gun cleaning kits, they come with metal pieces to poke in holes and to clean stuff out. And like uh, the wooden stir stick method, you don't chance messing up metal threads or those precision holes and things that are in your spray gun. Yeah. The only thing I should have done is I should have stopped off and got us a can of brake clean. I assume we could just blast this stuff off here and it'd be clean in a hurry. We're not bad. This is all just overspray stuff back here. Give it a quick little scrubby scrub. Try to knock the biggest part of the stuck on stuff off. This back here wasn't even in the thinner, but it's still, it'll clean up pretty easy. I just haven't, haven't taken time to really take it apart and scrub it in quite a while. So, I'll just keep doing that to the outside of this. Alright, outside is uh, within tolerance. Now, the inside's what really matters. The outside, yeah, it's nice to have it looking good, but man, the inside of that is awful. So, we're going to tear us off a piece of this Scotch-Brite, poke it in there, and just use a little piece of that stir stick and kind of push it in and then you know that scotch bright grabs the wood and it just turns it into a little scotch bright brush for you works awesome i keep going around twisting that dude and then i will dunk it back in my cup of thinner agitation pull that out first pass and yeah, did a little bit for us we just keep going with it. We use the the big end of everything now. Got a couple different size toothpicks broke off there. So, yeah, there's that. I don't know. I mean, sure, you can go down to Harbor Freight and buy you a new $60 paint gun every time you paint. But if you're buying the $20 paint guns from Harbor Freight, you're just not getting much of a spray gun, guys. I'm telling you. These older SATA guns come up on Marketplace all the time. And a kit for them is kind of expensive. But there are... I mean, they'll spray forever without being kitted. This gun is 20 years old. Never had a kit put in it probably wasn't sprayed with as much as some but it's been sprayed with a lot I promise you that So we just continue on, get each piece clean, and you know, the fluid or paint goes through that big hole in the middle. All the other holes are just for air. Make sure the sealing surfaces are good. Don't drop it, whatever you do, you know. Good way to ruin a, a gun. And just scrub all the crud off. And I'll use this, poke it down in there, use my little stir stick toothpick trick, twist this thing around a bunch of times. Wow, it got hung. Oh, wow. Might have to give it a little lacquer thinner in there. There we go. She likes that number. Scrubby scrub. Reposition. Scrub one more time. Get it clean, man. There we go. So, already a ton better. Now, I can also take this and just jam it in here. Twist. Jam and twist. You'll form the wood to the orifice. 
piece is starting out too big. Here we go. This one's a lot more tapered. You just don't want to push too hard or you'll break it off in there. But you can see that twisting around and around and then it popped out. Yeah, so now we know that seat is completely clean inside of there. Nice and polished up. So we'll call that piece pretty well ready to roll. Yeah, just one after another, fellas. Clean them up, set them off to the side, grab the next one. Ooh, the fluid needle. Yeah. The scrubby scrub. Yeah, there we go. And a throwaway world. You can keep a gun working. This thing's bought in 1998. Yeah. This is the really tender part here with all these little bitty holes. So, just scotch bright and scrub. Clean it up. <laughs> Dirty. You guys have uh, endured long enough, right? I've sat and let this stuff all dry out. You can see we got, there's still discoloration in this because it's a paint gun, we use it. So I just reassembly is in the opposite order. If you have some spray gun oil, good idea to put just a drop or a half a drop on the threads on these things because they get really tight putting them back together dry. So we've got to snug this down. I laid the paint gun wrench over here. Let me grab it. And found my paint gun wrench. Yeah, laying under a towel, of course. So, ah, oh, yeah, we want to get that good and tight. Any air leaks cause issues. Needle be another good spot for one drop of oil back here where it goes through the packing and stuff into this gun. We slip, slip that in there. I'm going to go ahead and put the air cap on just because it's laying there looking lonely. Get it tightened down again. One drop of air tool oil, not air tool oil, paint gun oil on the threads. Got this. Now spring goes on. <clears throat> I did move this uh, little lock nut here. So I could clean, get this thing looking nice. Here's the tip for the day. All right, drop that on. Put your thumb back here and push that in and then start the thing. Once you get it started straight, okay. You with me? Pull the trigger back all the way. Turn this dude in till you feel it bottom out or start to push the trigger forward. And then look back here, go another quarter of a turn roughly, and 
she's not going to spray any more material than that. So you could say on this gun, I believe it's uh, 24 or 27 pounds coming in. You get 10 PSI at the cap atomizes the paint good and with the trigger pulled all the way back and the fan wide open i mean that's a good setting to start playing with the gun so next episode we'll talk about setting the fan defects that we can have and um you know what it looks like when things are working our way man clean that one got got this one to take apart and clean there you go digital gauge that uh yeah battery goes dead then you got no gauge on the gun sure we're gonna take it apart soak it do the same thing we just did so i'll catch you guys on the next video if you liked it give it a thumbs up considering subscribing and uh, we'll catch you guys on the next video.